As we have already seen, one thing we truly dislike or hate is the truth in this country. Former President Ulushegun Obasanjo has come under fire for criticizing President Bola Metinobu's administration, the judiciary, and INEC actually over the weekend he charged to as a matter of urgency ensure the appointment of new and credible leadership of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, at levels for election integrity. According to him, the people must make sure that the INEC chairperson or his or her staff were thoroughly vetted, describing what is currently happening in Nigeria as state capture. Adding that the Nigerian judiciary has been heavily compromised by politicians, declared that justice in the country was now considered to be highest bidder. we reacting to it, Dr. Abbott actually said this was a direct attack to President Bola Metinbu. Well, I don't know if that is the case, but I'd love you to take a listen and let us know what you think about this analysis. Several conversations taking place uh, with a great focus on INEC, especially uh, following the off-cycle elections, Edo State, now Ondo State, uh, President, former President Obasanjo uh, has made his input. What, what's your take? So, Bimba, I would like to focus on the message. Because if I focus on the messenger, Obasanjo does not have the gravitas to be able to come and act as a saint in all of this. See, I was just going through the New Humanitarian, a newspaper dated 23rd April 2003, that says, Obasanjo declared winner in a vote mad by fraud. President Lucia Gobasjo was on Tuesday declared winner of Nigeria Electoral Commission for weekend in votes largely rejected. So as regards the election sanctity, Obasanjo is no saint. This was 2003, I was telling you off. We all know the shenanigan he did in the time. But is his message right? Yes. It's becoming like state capture because people are tired of the electoral process. Look at on those states. 1.7 million people have PVC in their hands. Less than 500,000 people decided who was going to be leader. People have checked out. You know what? They, they, you know the song back in the 80s here? Andrew, no leave town, no. Andrew, don't leave town. Andrew, don't jack power. That's what's happening in Nigeria today. He talked about the state of the economy. Yes, this administration ruined, and I keep saying, ruined the economy. High inflation rate, as we speak today, he talked about when the economy was rebased as a 514 billion in 2014. Today is less than 200 million in terms of economy GDP. The debt, which is another big problem, which we talked about last week. We were both here with Tilewa when we talked about the debt. Mountain debt, they are taking a deficit of 13.8 trillion now, plus the 134 million on ground. It's going to go up to 150 plus. Plus the ways and means, which the president said they have cleared, they have not cleared ways and means. That debt is also on ground, over 30 billion. I mean, Tilewa confirmed it, yeah. We're talking facts, not emotions. All of the debt on ground, the state of the forex, the state of the general economic malaise, this is true. IMF came out with a report recently that says all of these economic reforms of President Tinubu is not working. Also, IMF came out with a report recently that says a child born in Nigeria has a lower life expectancy compared to his compatriots in other parts. And what are those things, developmental goals? So all the things Obasanjo just said was well and true. He talked about the fifth dom. Hayek, you know, wrote a book called The Road to Sefdom. Pretty much explaining the things that are happening in the world as we speak today. There's an economic, you know, malaise that it's only some people that have grabbed and cannibalized power. Lagos has been in their kitty for 25 years. That's just it. While the people constantly suffer. So we've seen a great state of state capture. The people are dissolution about the security process and all of that. But if we are to look at the person that delivered the message, in his time too, he did things. In all fairness to him, the economy, yes, is better then compared to now. He achieved some milestones. But he too didn't do well largely. We had electoral fraud. We had a lot of shenanigans. We had a lot of high-handedness. We saw the fight back and forth he did with Lagos State Governor. As at that time, tried to assert the power of the federal minds. We saw these things, but his message is 100% correct. And Mr. Byron Onuga tried reacting to him. He said, oh, he's just talking to me. The truth is, everything Obasu just said is valid. Yeah, Byron Onuga will do his work to react and all of that, and, but it doesn't change it. Valid and on point. There's no lie. You should pick out the lie in what he has said. Okay, what are the key editorial points? 
we should look at the editorial points. And they are as follows. President Olusegun uh, Obasanjo was speaking at the Chinua Achebe Leadership Forum at uh, Ye University, New Haven, Connecticut, in the United States. And he used that opportunity to comment about leadership in Nigeria. In 1983, Chinua Achebe wrote a book about the problem with Nigeria. And his conclusion in that book was about leadership. He said leadership was the problem. Now, essentially, what President Obasanjo did was to say, uh, you know, pointedly, that leadership is still the problem. And that's what led him to the comment about the Tinumbu administration. And I think that is significant because this is the first time that President uh, 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 Obasanjo, who is a well-noted letter writer, will be making a statement about the Tinubu administration. And he was saying, precisely, validating what Chinua Achebe said in 1983, that leadership is, is still the problem. In other words, it seems to me that President uh, Obasanjo is saying that with Tinubu, with President Tinubu, we do not have the good leadership that we are asking for. And it was very specific. He says, corruption is still working on stilts, and that this administration has not been able to deal with the problem of corruption. And that when a government is embedded in corruption, then that government cannot function. This is a direct attack by President Obasanjo on uh, President uh, Tinubu's administration. This will be the first time he will do it. And he has also talked about state capture. He said something about state capture. OK, there are many Nigerians who hold that view who say the election in Odo State, it was further might than he to speak to state capture, which is a phrase made popular by uh, Professor Patutome in a, in a book of the same subject about how this state has been captured by vested interests. Now, uh, President uh, Obasanjo, echoing Pachitome, is also talking about state capture. He's also talking about corruption. When they had their election in Delta State the other time, uh, Professor Pachitome was not even allowed to know the venue of the occasion. Now we have had the do, we have had the Baesta, we have had the what is it called? Undo State, Ikiti, and Undo State. At the end of the day, you know, those who know, those who are concerned, are complaining about state capture and the failure of leadership. I think that these are the key points about the uh, submissions made by President Obasanjo about failure and state capture. But more importantly, about the legacy of Chino Achebe that Chino Achebe in 1983 will have recognized in his book, The Trouble with uh, Nigeria, that leadership is a problem. The same uh, uh, Chino Achebe subsequently refused to accept a national honor from Nigeria. These are persons of wisdom, icons, diamonds of Nigeria, who spoke truth to power. And look at it in 2024. What Achebe said is now being quoted by President Obasanjo. Achebe was not president. He was not interested in being president, but was a prophetic writer, beginning with no longer at ease. Subsequently, the civil war started. Things fall apart. Didn't things fall apart in Nigeria? There are, things are still falling apart in this country. So I see in... Uh, you know, uh, President Obasan just ran about reference to Chino Achebe. The power of literature, the power of the prophetic significance of literature and of the poets who have prophetic significance in this environment. It is left for President uh, Tinubu uh, 
to listen to what Obasanjo has said, uh, but you may ask uh, Mr. Bayo Nonoga to issue a statement and abuse Obasanjo. I, uh, well, but what will it matter? I think that the message is important, as uh, Rufa Hussaini pointed out, not the messenger. Absolutely. There are so many talking points and so many uh, topics to reflect on uh, in this uh, talk, keynote sp uh, speech that was delivered by the former president. Uh, but when I heard it, as a, probably because it was given at an academic forum, it also made me think back to my academic days. Politics 101 specifically, when the first things that were defined in terms of the pillars of good governance, power, legitimacy and authority, Power being the ability to create intended effects. Authority being the legitimate use of power. Now, legitimacy is the widely accepted consensus by the people that you have been given authority. Now, when one of these pillars is missing, governance becomes a very arduous task. In this instance, when we look at the case of election integrity, legitimacy seems to have left the building. Now it's struggling when you need, when you're looking for development, when you're looking to build a nation, it's virtually impossible to do so without carrying people along. But what you've done by removing people from this process or making people feel like their voice doesn't, doesn't matter, by alienating the people, it becomes very difficult to move this, this train along where it's supposed to be as people are jumping, jumping ship at the next stop, wherever they can escape to jump off. So yes, you may have the power, you may have the authority, but without the legitimacy, without the necessary uh, integrity of the electoral system, it all becomes extremely futile, which is what we see today. We see several reforms announced here and there. We see several calls uh, for optimism. We see several calls for people to, ha to renew their hope. And you see a minority of people are buying into the school of thought because they feel that they were alienated and excluded from the electoral process that brought us to where we are today. Now, with regards to some of the reforms that need to happen, it was quite heartbreaking to listen to the reforms because none of these ideas are new. These are all things that have been said ad nauseum in the past. In fact, when we think of electoral reform, everybody thinks back to 2022 and the optimism and the joy and excitement, the enthusiasm that people had that the 2023 election was going to be a new era in Nigerian elections with the introduction of technology, uh, you know, with so many new things that had been introduced into the conversation. However, I want to quote uh, President Olusegun Obasanjo as he said, technology did not fail. INEC willfully failed to use or implement it. And unfortunately, that's where we stand today, where most people are disheartened and disillusioned with the electoral process. So something has got to give in order for us to have our three pillars of governance back. Power, authority and legitimacy.